Hello everyone, I'm Said. In this video, we are going to see how we can deal with large data in Entity Framework Core and what is the actual issue when you have Envarcar Max or Var Binary Max in your table. This issue I came across one time that I had big data in my table. I could see that there is some issues when I use the asynchronous operation. The sync one was better than asynchronous. I'm going to show you what is the actual problem with the Envarcar Max and why you need to be careful about how you need to design your schema and how you need to choose the better data type for your columns. Here I have a very simple model and benchmark that I'm going to run it and see the result about the async and the sync operation. So simply I have a table that text table 2 megabyte and also I have another 1 megabyte. I'm going to just simulate the scenarios that you can put and insert large amount of a string to your columns. This 1 megabyte you can play with the benchmark by yourself but here I'm going to focus on this 2 megabyte because I'm going to insert two megabyte a string to one of the table columns. Here simply we have only two properties in the table ID and text right what is the use case here if you ask so usually when we are dealing with the description or reading file content and insert to our database we need to choose Envarcar Max because we don't know what is the exact size of that content and should be extensible, right? And also I've seen some scenarios that some developers are trying to even save a file in the database, which is, I don't like the scenario because usually we need to use CDN to saving file or, you know, save the file in the FTP server or Azure blob storage. And then just we need to save the URL of that file, not the content itself. It is not a good idea, to be honest. But maybe still, there is some scenarios that you may think that because of the security, I need to save the file in my table so that, yeah, maybe you choose to go for the database side. I already created the database here. I have one record in the table id and tag so i'm going to just create some strings on the fly based on the count here it is lots of characters you can see it is around 2000 character right i'm gonna just going straight to the running the benchmark and then after we saw the the result we can talk more about what is the actual problem so here i'm gonna just truncate this table to removing everything from this table before running the okay so now our, our table is empty and here for the benchmark first in global setup this one runs only once before the benchmark start executing these methods as you know here i am using this method for creating the string one character and around 2 million times repeating that characters. But you need to careful about the database as well. What I mean here, the column type here is nvarcar max, not car or not varcar. When it's nvarcar for each character, because of the, the binary one, it will take two bytes for each character. When we insert 2 megabyte data to the database, actually it takes around 4 megabytes from database storage. Just to be clear about what is the difference between CAR and NCAR. Okay, here I'm going to run this command. Our DB context is nothing special. I'm getting the connection string from the constructor. If it's null, then I set this one. Later on, I use this connection string to optimize our code. But here, nothing special, and then using a SQL server. Okay. What else? I just create a new instance of the DB context, and then first or default async, and first or default the sync one. Because we have only one record. This is a very least scenario that I'm going to do the benchmark. Usually in your real world application, you're gonna have many rows in your table and for sure this benchmark will show you that if the table has only one record, but in your real world application gonna be much slower than this one, okay? 
nothing much about this benchmark i'm not going to talk about this just uh, i'm gonna set the, the trends here because we have the baseline true and yeah that's it so let's run the project i have only one line here for running the benchmark and then let's see what we have okay uh yeah so the benchmark start running we have two methods it's gonna take a while to run i'm gonna stop the video and then after getting the result we will talk about that okay we got the result from the benchmark as you can see the async operation takes around 155 milliseconds but sync operation is only taking 31 milliseconds it means the sync one is around five times faster than async operation very interesting no for me it was a surprise when i saw this kind of differences between async operation and sync operation in your entity framework because usually it is always recommended to use async apis when you are dealing with your database or any other part of the application because we know that async not blocking your application from doing something else so it is always recommended to use async await here the more interesting part as i said it's around four megabyte for that record but also the allocation is double size of the sync one which one is actually is maybe more important for you because usually when you run your application on production memory allocation becomes very critical because easily you can get the out of memory exception in your application or your backend server we can see that async operation here is very slow in case of the nvarcar max we have around four megabyte for that column and uh, you can imagine if you have many records in your table multiple or maybe you are trying to get least async of that table gonna be much more worse than here right let's a little talk about what is the main issue usually we know that when we are trying to use the async methods by default we have some extra overhead for async operation because of the internal managing state of the dotnet runtime it try to check every time okay this task is done or no is there any data to get or no you know many kind of overhead that we usually need to handle our state machine when we are using the async await internals and also this allocation is exactly for that because it try to you know copy paste create new buffer create uh, new stuff to just handling the data until that result is completed and will return the result to the client side actually the the problem is not about async await and also the problem is not about entity framework or itself because entity framework is doing nothing in case of connecting to the sql server getting data it is just a wrapper before and after executing the query af core will comes to the picture and then doing mapping for us keep in mind this orm entity framework responsibility is before executing the query it means translating your link queries to the tsql and then after when we get result it tries to map the result coming from the database to the our clr object and our models what is the problem the problem is at the last level of our .NET, which is sql client Entity Framework will prepare all the queries or mapping stuff and then we'll pass it to the SQL client to run our query against the SQL server. We have one open bug, an open issue in the, the GitHub that actually this is the main reason for creating this video. It opened four years ago in 2020 and still it's open. I am using the latest version of the .NET, .NET 9, and also the previous seven of AF Core libraries. Maybe at this time, the description from the Roji is saying that it takes around, I don't know, few seconds for getting the data. We had some improvement during the time, especially in .NET 8, but still 
we can see that there is a lots of issue again uh, remains in the async operation i will put this url and then you can read it by yourself very interesting threads here try to read all of the comments in this issue so the main issue is the way that this SQL client, Microsoft Data SQL client, implement the async away pattern is not efficient enough. And other things that we need to care, we have a protocol called DTS, that is tabular data stream, and usually is for the streaming and transitioning the data between server to server. Here is our backend and database. We have uh, another object that is responsible for getting data from the SQL part called TDS parser state object. And this one is actually uh, responsible for wrapping all the result because SQL Server is sending data as a stream to our uh, client. And here it is responsible for wrapping, for you know, aggregating the packets until the data is completely received. I mentioned that this one is responsible for aggregating the packet. It means every time a SQL Server is sending to the client side packet by packet. And the default size is 16 kilobytes. So every time it is sending the 16 kilobyte of that result to this class, to the SQL client, and then it will just copy the bytes into the buffer. What if, if we can increase that packet size, and then we are saying that I can, based on our backend specification, we can say because I have many memory or I have a good CPU, then I can increase the packet size just because I need to improve the performance, right? And keep in mind, this one is still open. So this solution is a kind of trick just to improve your query or your application in such a these scenarios. So what I'm going to do here is instead of using this connection in string, still it is possible to set the packet size inside your connection string to telling the server, database server, please send me larger packet size to my application. I already paste this code just to saving time. So I'm going to pass this connection string, but with the packet size parameter. Keep in mind the packet size, the maximum value you can put is 32 kilobytes. So we cannot set it more than that. This is the maximum one. I'm going to run the benchmark again with the new connection string. Nothing changed. We just add the packet size in the connection string. Also, I'm going to comment these lines here because we cannot have multiple baselines. Just I want to see the difference with the new connection string. The last one was 155 milliseconds for the async. And then let's see if it can improve the code or performance. We will see after running the, the benchmark. Okay, let's run the benchmark. Benchmark is running. Again, it will take a while after we can see the result. Here is the result with using packet size in the connection string, and it is improving the performance from 155 to 83 milliseconds, which is good one. It seems around two times faster than without, you know, setting the packet size in the connection string. But still, the, the allocation part is the same and makes sense because size of result is the same with the previous one. And also the async operation still needed those kind of uh, magic for handling the state machine, copying the binaries to the buffers. And then see the allocation part is the same with eight megabytes. And also this one is the uh, same as before. But because we set the packet size to 32 kilobytes, it seems the count of iteration between the server and application decreases because now we can get more data, larger packet size, and then those kind of iteration for checking the result is complete or not is less. 
So we could improve the performance in case of the speed and around two times faster. The thing that we need to careful about Envercare Max and how much data we are saving in our database. In my opinion, always is good to set the max length in the string properties because by default, if you don't set the max length for the string properties, EF Core will choose Envercare Max because EF Core doesn't know what you want to input or insert in your database. So by default, it will take Envercare Max. And then actually you need to be careful because this one is a little can be kind of a security issue as well because if you have an open input in your application or in your UI, someone will put, I don't know, 10 megabyte of text and then we'll send it to you and you save the data to your database. And after that, you will see a lot of performance issue and speed degradation in your application. So always better to set the max length if you can. For the last time, I want to run another benchmark just for checking the async part. Actually, the sync part, it doesn't matter because it's always the same. Here I am going to run this two. One is without packet size and one is with packet size to see what is the exact difference between these two and see the result, okay? So I'm gonna put the baseline as the default one and let's run the benchmark again. This code, I will put it in my GitHub repo, so feel free to play with that. I don't know, trying to insert 10 megabytes, 5 megabytes in your database and then run the benchmark to see what is the difference. Before running this one, I want to truncate the table as well to run the benchmark on the same situation. Here we have five records because of the running benchmark. So if I just truncate the table again, table, this one. Okay, now table is empty and let's run the benchmark for the last time. Now we can see the result for comparing the async operations with packet size and without it. We can see that it is exactly two times faster than without using packet size. Uh, I just wanted to show you this benchmark as well. So uh, just to recap what we had here in this video, for using in Varkar Max or Var Binary Max, you need to be careful and need to know your requirements. Don't put the string property as default, which is Envercare Max in the Entity Framework Core when you are creating the migrations. Always set the max length for that and be careful about checking the user input as well. Here, as I said, this is the open issue from four years ago. Still, in .NET 9, we have some improvement, but we need to keep track of this issue to be resolved or no. Based on this one, they said because this SQL client is very complex to change and maybe it takes years to solve this problem, actually. I hope they can solve this issue as soon as possible because as a developer, when we are starting the project, maybe we don't care about this kind of issues or maybe we don't know what kind of tables we will have, the, the column types or whatever, but it is good to know this kind of issues. Asynchronous is good, but not always. Sometimes sync operation is way better than asynchronous because of the extra overhead and state machine task and uh, many things that will come to the picture when we are using asynchronous, right? So that's it. Please leave a comment for me if you have such this kind of experiences with your Entity Framework Core, dealing with the large data or with the Envarcar Max. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well. Uh, lots of interesting videos gonna come here. Usually I'm just creating videos based on my real experience with the, the projects. So if you are interested, please subscribe. Thank you for your time. Until next video, bye.